Hello, and welcome to Physics Review Videos, Unit 9, Sound and Light. Topic, the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect, when does this occur? Well, this occurs as a source moves closer to or away from an observer. As an observer moves closer to or away from a source, the key here is relative motion between source and an observer. The easier way to think about this is the source is something making a sound. Let's say, like an ambulance. The observer is the person listening to it. If you are sitting in the ambulance, you are moving with it, and so there's no relative motion between you and the source. However, if you're standing on the sidewalk and the ambulance is moving towards you, we would see the Doppler effect. If you are moving away and the ambulance is parked, so if you were the one in motion, you would still see the Doppler effect. So the Doppler effect occurs when, the, when an object making a noise and someone listening to the noise are moving relative to one another. If we demonstrate this in a little picture here, let's say we have an object here making waves. If you're normally making waves, they're going to send out an equal space. However, let's say the object in the center is moving as it's making waves. If it is moving towards the right, it is moving towards waves it previously made on the right side. On the right side, then, those waves are going to bunch up. On the left, what we would see is over here, behind it, these waves are spacing out. So on the back, you're going to have very large wavelengths relative to how they started. In the front, you're going to have very small wavelengths in terms of how they originally started. There's also a relationship between wavelength and frequency to keep in mind. As wavelength gets bigger, frequency gets smaller or lower. As wavelengths become smaller, the frequencies become higher. So at the end of the wave, what we would see is in the front, you're going to have higher frequencies, or as you hear it, a higher pitch. In the back behind, as you're moving away, we would see lower frequencies. Now, the Doppler effect itself, if you want to think about it, when a car or an ambulance or something making a noise is moving towards and away from you, you're going to have a difference in the pitch you hear. Something like that. Now, mathematically, the Doppler effect can be expressed in this fashion. The equation we use is using the following symbols. There's an F with what looks like an apostrophe. We're going to call that F prime. That is the apparent frequency, or the frequency that you hear while the object and you are in relative motion to one another. F itself is going to stand for the actual frequency being produced. To give you an example, let's say we have a siren. The siren's always making the same sound. Let's say it's something like this. And that's the sound always being produced. However, if you are moving towards or away that siren or that sound, or it is moving towards or away from you, the pitch is going to appear to change. That's the F prime. So you might hear the pitch become higher, or the pitch become lower. So as a sound source is moving towards you, if you are stationary, you're going to hear the pitch increase. And if it is moving away from you, you're going to hear the pitch decrease. This happens quite regularly, and you're probably well aware of this as you've seen many vehicles move that are making noises. Now, in terms of the rest of the equation, even though it looks complex, it's actually not too much there. V is going to be the speed of sound is in air. We're going to take this for this problem to be around 345 meters per second. Now that may vary based off of outdoor temperature, it may vary based off of your altitude, but it's roughly the speed of sound is in air in most general locations. We also have two other Vs. We have V sub O or V naught. That's going to be the speed of the observer. So how fast the person listening to the object is going to be moving. Vs is going to be the speed of the sound source. So how fast the object making the noise itself is moving. The important thing for Doppler 
for, for the Doppler effect to occur is that these two speeds need to be different. So if you notice, there's a plus and minus sign in there. The plus and minus sign give us an option. So if we look here, the top and bottom have an option. They have a plus slash minus. What that means is we need to actually cognitively think and determine which of those two we're going to choose. So first we have to ask ourselves, what is moving? Is the sound source in motion? Or is the person listening in motion? If the sound source is in motion, then this is the rule we're going to have to follow. If the sound source is moving towards the listener or towards the observer, we will have a negative sign in the denominator. If the sound source is moving away from the observer, we are then going to have a positive sign in the denominator. A quick refresher in terms of the terminology, don't forget, denominator is going to be referring to the bottom. So we are only choosing plus or minus in the bottom in this situation. However, what if the observer is in motion? So if the observer is the one in motion, then we're going to be dealing with the numerator. So we're going to be dealing with the top. So if you aren't the person listening, and let's say you're in a car and you're driving towards a parked police car or a parked ambulance making a noise, then this is the situation we'll be looking at. So if you are moving towards an object making a, making a noise, we would choose a positive in the numerator. However, if you are moving away from the source, we're going to take a minus or a negative in the numerator instead. So now let's actually work through an example problem. Let's say suppose the car's horn is normally 300 hertz. If the car were traveling at 30 meters per second towards a bystander on the road, what would the bystander hear? Well, first let's start pulling out some of our information. 300 hertz, that's going to be one of my true frequencies. If we examine this problem, it says the car's horn is normally 300 hertz. That's going to be the sound source frequency. So that's my normal F. The car is traveling 30 meters per second towards. The car is talk, or the object is making the noise. So that means this is going to be my velocity because it's in meters per second and some meter velocity of my source. The bystander is on the road. All right, with this problem, we're looking at someone who is stationary, which implies that they're stationary. So that's going to be the velocity of the observer is going to be stationary. I want to know what the bystander would hear. Again, what you hear is the apparent frequency. So F prime is my apparent frequency. That's what I'm looking for or solving for in this problem. F is my source frequency. That was given to me as 300 hertz. My velocity V, we're assuming is 345 meters per second, unless otherwise stated. My VO is the speed of the observer. That's implied to be zero. And the speed of the sound source is 30 meters per second. So we have all the variables needed to solve. The only variable we do not know is my F prime. That is what I'm solving for. So if we take these variables and we have our formula, we can plug them in. So it's going to be written out this way. Now if you notice, we have something else in the problem itself. We have our plus and minus. This is the point where again we stop and think. So I have to ask myself, what is moving and which way is it moving? Well, the source or the car is moving. So if I go to my rules for the source, if the source moves towards the observer, I'm going to have a negative sign in the denominator. If the source is moving away from the observer, I'm going to have a positive sign in the denominator. So this means I'm going to have a negative in the denominator. When I solve the problem out, I'm going to then be able to reach my answer. So plus or minus zero that comes out there. We know this here is going to become a negative. 
So I'm going to take 345 minus 30. That's going to give me a total of 315. So I have 315 meters per second in my denominator. My numerator doesn't change. It's 345 because it's plus or minus 0 meters per second. And then that is going to be multiplied by 300 hertz. Meters per second and meters per second over here, we know that that's going to cancel out, leaving my only unit hertz. And then when I solve all the way through, I'm going to get an answer of 328.5 hertz. And this is how we will solve a Doppler problem.